Uh, now I want to turn those lines into elements. Okay. Uh, so I need to close down my uh, create and again close down my modeling. I don't need to do any more modeling. And I want to open up the meshing um, sub menu. Uh, again, maybe I'll just save it here. And it's a good point throughout this just to save whenever you um, uh, are between um, procedures. Okay, so I'll open up the modeling, sorry, the uh, meshing uh, sub menu. And the mesh tool is probably the easiest interface to use here. So I'm going to open up the mesh tool. Um, let's just make sure that that's on the screen where you can see it. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to tell the measure that um, each line should only be divided into one element and not more than one element. Again, if you want to see the reason for this, look at the end of case study A where it shows you what happens if you use more than one element. Um, it's not a good idea for truss elements. Truss elements should only have one element along their length. Um, and again, that's explained in detail in the book uh, wh uh, why that is. Okay, so what I wanted to say, I'm going to go to here to size controls and I'm going to look at lines and I see this set command. So it's going to set the size of each uh, that, of each line. In other words, set the number of elements that each line will, do, will be divided into. So I click on set. I get a box opening over here telling me, well, which lines do you want to, do you want to um, affect? So I'm going to say pick all because I want to do it to all lines. So it says pick all and it tells me the number of element divisions for each line. I'm going to set that to one. Okay, I don't need to do anything else here for the moment. Uh, then I just click OK. So now it, it, you can see the display has changed slightly. All that display is trying to show me is that each um, line is divided into one element. Okay, so my mesh, uh, my mesh toolbox has disappeared. Where has that gone to? It's actually hidden behind the main menu. If that ever happens, I can go up here and click on the raise hidden box, and that brings back up the um, the hidden uh, dialog box again. So now what I want to do is I'm ready to mesh my 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 problem here. So I just click on the mesh button in the mesh tool. And then again, it tells me, well, which lines do you want to mesh? And again, the same answer, I want you to mesh all of them. So let's pick pick all. And you can see here that uh, the display has changed again. Everything has gone blue. Um, you might be asking, well, what's going on there? Well, um, it, this is just the default way that ANSYS likes to display these elements. If you wanted to look to look in further and see, well, you know, are we sure that it's actually just div divided each line into one element? We can go up to plot controls, or we can go to style, and we could turn on let's say, um, uh, the element size and shape, or we could look at edge op options, or perhaps one of the easiest ways to actually do it is to look at the, the numbering controls rather than doing that. So let's go back up to numbering, click on numbering, and it asks us what we want to affect. So let's look at element numbers. Let's put on element numbers. It says colors and numbers. Let's go OK for that. So you can see that is one element. That's element number two. There is element number three, four, five and six. So I can be quite confident from this display that each uh, line is is just broken into one element because if, for example, this line here had two elements, was meshed with two elements, I would see different colors in that line and different numbers. I would see maybe 16 and 22 or whatever it is. Okay, so I'm just going to turn off that again. Just go plot controls, numbering, and down here to element numbers, I'm just going to say no numbering. We don't need that for the time being. Okay, so um, the next thing I need to do is to apply my constraints and my loads. Okay, so the first thing, if you remember from um, the, the diagram shown in the um, in chapter 10 of the book in case study A, was that the bottom left-hand corner was fixed in all degrees of freedom. In other words, it could not move. So let's start by doing that. So we get rid of our meshing um, sub-menu. We go down to loads. So we expand loads, define loads, apply and we're applying a structural load, so expand structural. Um, we're going to be affecting displacement, first of all, so we're putting constraint on. We're constraining the displacement of a particular point. And what, is it, what, do we, what do we want to constrain? A line, an area, so on. In this case, let's con constrain the nodes, or the key points. In this case, it wouldn't, it wouldn't really matter which you picked. If you pick um, key point, it'll transfer the constraint onto the node in this case because they happen to be at the same point. But let's just, um, for good practice, put it on the nodes. Okay, so I'm going to pick this node here at the bottom left-hand corner. I'm going to click OK and then this dialog box comes up and it says, well, what do you want to constrain? In this case, all degrees of freedom. And I'll just put a zero in there. They want them to have a, a zero displacement value. So you can see that this symbol has now appeared here showing me that the uh, this node is constrained in the vertical direction and also in the horizontal direction. 
Okay, the next thing I need to do is apply the um, other constraint to the right hand edge of the truss structure. And in this case, it's only going to be constrained in the vertical direction. It'll be free to move in horizontal, but will be constrained in the vertical direction. So again, I go on nodes um, and I pick the node I'm interested in. I go OK. And in this case, we want to make sure it's the UY that's clicked and again, zero. So you can see here uh, the constraint has appeared and it's pointing only in the vertical direction, which means that we're only holding that node from moving up and down. It's free to move left and right. OK, so then we now have our constraints um, on our model. The next thing we need to do is put our loads. So we can close down the submenus and again apply structural, uh, in this case, force. We want to apply forces and again on nodes. So again, if you refer to um, the figure um, in chapter 10, um, figure 10.01, it'll show you where um, exactly these loads need to be and what exactly they, what exact value they need to have or magnitude they need to have. Okay, so the first force is on this point here, which is the extreme left-hand side of this truss structure. We click on OK, um, and it's in the Y direction, so we need to put on FY. And we need to put on the value in here. We need to put on a negative value because if, you, if we look here, the positive y-axis is pointing upwards and we want our force to act down. Uh, and the force that is acting on this point is 300 kilonewtons. So we put in minus 300,000. And again, it, this is quite important because as um, we, we cover in chapter two of the book, um, a consistent unit system is very important if you want to have reliable fundamental analysis results. Um, we entered our material properties in Pascal's. We drew our model or, or defined our model in um, uh, meters. So it's very important that our loads are applied then in newton or newtons, not kilonewtons. So if I'd entered 300 rather than 300,000 here, I would get an incorrect answer. And again, Go to chapter two and, and, and read the section on units where this is explained in detail. Okay, so I just click on apply here. Um, and now I want to apply another um, force uh, here at this point. So I click on the point, I click on OK. And in this case, we're applying a load of 320,000 Newtons. Again, click apply, click on the next point and go OK. And this load is 350,000 Newtons click on apply again and then the last load is on the extreme right hand side uh, of the truss structure click on OK and this one is 360,000 Newtons so again make sure you have we're going the y direction we're going negative and 360 OK now there's our loads applied so again if you compare this figure with the figure that's given um, in, in chapter 10 on for case study A you'll see you've ended up with more or less the same finite amount model um, so now we're ready to solve so it's always a good point to save at this point and um, we can close down our um, loads menus because we're finished with those we're also finished with the preprocessor so we've worked our way down through everything we need to use in the preprocessor in this case so we can close the preprocessor down um, we've built our model we're ready to solve so we can open up the solution module of ANSYS um, by default ANSYS um, always um, uh, is ready to go um, with the linear static analysis which is what we want here but just just um, for good practice it's always a good idea to go to analysis type click on new analysis and make sure static is collect is selected because that's what we need here and we'll go OK and uh, we're now ready to solve so we can expand the solve um, menu here and we want to solve the current load step so we just click on current load step so we get an information box up here and also we get the box where we can click and, and solve straight away. It's always a good idea to take a look at the information box and just see what it says. Um, it's telling us that we have a 2D problem, which is correct. It's telling us that our degrees of freedom are in the X and the Y direction, which is correct. It's telling us we want a static steady state analysis. That's perfect. Um, it's telling us that the global assembled matrix will be symmetric. And again, that, that, that is covered in the, the theory aspects of the book in chapter four about the elements if you want to see what, what that means there. Okay, so we're ready to go, so we can close down that status box and we can click on OK to solve here. So we click on OK and you can see very quickly we've got a solution is done box has appear, appear there because this is a relatively simple problem, quite easy for ANSYS to solve this. So we close down the solution is done box and we now want to look at our results. Um, so it's probably a good idea to save here again. Uh, so we can close down the solution module here um, and we, in order to look at our results we have to go to a post processor. So we're going to look at the general post processor 